Hey there, it's your girl Sophia, coming at you with a sly story that still makes my stomach churn. Strap on your seatbelts and prepare for a bumpy ride. I'm going to be honest, I've been single my whole life and I've been dreaming of having a boyfriend since the beginning of time, or the beginning of my time at least. Sure, maybe I'm just a stereotypical girl, but I want to find my Prince Charming riding in on a noble white horse with his luscious wavy locks blowing in the wind. Ah. <sighs> oh, sorry. Was I daydreaming again? However, my only problem has been that I haven't been able to find the right guy yet. None of the guys that I've met at work or in school classes seem to scream Prince Charming to me. I'm looking for a guy to hold a door open for me. Someone who isn't afraid to show their true, inner emotions. I want a guy that plays music and will write love songs for me as we eat grapes in front of a fireplace on a cold winter night. Oh, that would just be glorious. Ah. Well, who am I kidding? That guy doesn't exist out there. Or at least I haven't found him yet. Maybe my expectations are too high. Or so I thought. My friend Nancy came over and I told her about my frustrations I was feeling about wanting to meet my Prince Charming. We sat in my room and went through the list of guys we know. Neither of us could really find a good fit for me. I was partially jealous of Nancy because she's been with her boyfriend for two years already. So I always go to her for relationship advice. She told me that her sister actually met her fiancé on a dating site, and she just got engaged. My eyes blazed open with the energy of a thousand suns. It was perfect! Why didn't I think about online dating before? I snatched my computer off of my desk, and we went to work, creating the perfect online dating profile and checked all the boxes from the criteria that I was looking for in an ideal man. The only thing left to do was to create the perfect profile picture. Thankfully, Nancy has some gnarly photography and Photoshop skills that are beyond her years. We went to a pond near sunset and had a little photo session trying to find the best angles of me. We went back to my house and she went to work. A chick flick and a batch of cookies later and her masterpiece was done. After some major enhancements, I was hardly recognizable, but I looked amazing. When I finally clicked the last button that made my profile live, we both squealed and giggled at the thought of what was to come. I'll be sure to attract my blonde-haired, blue-eyed beauty that's six feet tall and covered in glistening muscles for sure. I reassured Nancy of her brilliance by bringing out the face masks and nail polish to have a spa day and ordered some celebratory pizza. For the first time in a long while, I feel hopeful for the future. Next week, at this exact time, I may meet my future husband. Something about that thought brings so many different emotions rushing through my body. I think my heart could just leap out of my chest. The next day, we woke up from our sleepover and immediately grabbed my computer to check my profile to see if I got any matches. We looked in my notifications of the dating website and there were three matches. The first guy had some similar interests as me according to his profile, but his appearance wasn't quite giving me butterflies. The second guy was nice looking, but something about his profile picture made me think that he was just a shallow frat boy that wasn't quite ready to settle down. Maybe it was the fact that all of his pictures were of him next to sports cars. That would be nice to have a sports car, but I want someone genuine with a good heart, not someone that feels like they need to flaunt their money around. The third guy actually took my breath away. In appearance, he was exactly what I was looking for. After looking through his profile, we seemed to match near flawlessly together. I questioned if I should message him first, and Nancy reassured me that if it didn't work out, then I at least have two other options to go back to. I took a moment to build up some courage, took a breath, and began to write a message to this guy, being careful not to sound too desperate. 
wouldn't want him to get the wrong idea, even if I do feel a bit desperate. <laughs> Within a few moments, he messaged me back and began asking me some normal questions when dating, like about what I like to do for fun and about what I do for work. I was careful to be honest, but this was a stranger online, so I left the answers kind of basic, not to reveal too much personal information yet. I can never be too careful with strangers. We talked for a few days through the site's messaging system, and finally, we scheduled to meet at a local Greek restaurant. Carefully, I put together an outfit and began to get ready hours before I was supposed to leave. It was one of those days that I felt like I had nothing to wear. I texted Nancy and she said that she had the perfect outfit for me to wear and brought over a little black dress with a necklace for me to borrow. Can't go wrong with that option. She left quickly so I could finish up getting ready. I've never felt so nervous in my entire life and started doubting myself. What if he doesn't like me? Well, there's nothing I can do about that now. Wish me luck. I messaged him and told him what I was wearing, but I wore a long coat over it in case I saw him and didn't want him to recognize me. I went in early because I was nervous of being late and got a booth in the corner. They brought me some water and bread as I patiently waited. Looking at my phone to check the time, it was five minutes after when he said he would be here. I thought maybe he was waiting for me out in the lobby this whole time and thinks that I'm the one that's late. I was about to get up when I received the shock of my life. My dad was seated in a booth on the opposite side of the room from me. What was dad doing here? He told me that he was going to be working late on a project with a tight deadline. I ducked down as low as I could and watched him for a while. Why is he eating at a fancy restaurant without mom? Seeing him wouldn't be so bad, except for the fact that my dad is rather traditional and has always said that I need to ask him before I go on a date with someone. This just adds to the whole pressure of being on a first date with a stranger. Aside from my dad being there, I was genuinely getting concerned about why the guy hadn't arrived at the restaurant yet. Did one of us get the wrong address? Maybe there's another restaurant in the town with the same name. I pulled out my phone and messaged him, asking if he was still planning on showing up. He messaged me back, saying that he was already there, and was sitting in a booth and described what he was wearing. I looked around the room and realized the outfit that was described was the same outfit that my dad was wearing. I didn't understand what was going on. There must be some sort of mistake. Is my dad the person I've been talking to this whole time? I messaged my date asking him to describe where he was sitting, and just then, I saw my dad respond to a message that seemed to be around the same time as when I sent it. I got up and began to walk over to my dad's table. Dad looked over to me with wide, surprised eyes. I asked my dad why he was at this restaurant, and he said that he had a business meeting with a colleague that he was working with on this case. For a little backstory, Dad is a successful lawyer in the area and works long hours when he has a really complex case. Or so I thought. I sat down in Dad's booth and I told him I wouldn't stay long. He seemed really jittery and nervous when I sat down, so I decided to question him a bit more. I asked if the colleague was another lawyer. His face began glistening as it was glazed with sweat. He said yes in a very rushed voice. The waitress came by and tried to take our order, and my dad said no that he needed more time. However, I was on to his little scheme. I could see through this meeting and sweaty brow. It was about time to have some mischievous fun with this lying, cheating scoundrel of a dad. I asked him if his friend was a guy or a girl, and he said it was a woman. Then I asked him, if she was married with kids, and if she's pretty. He said he didn't really know or think about it. He asked me why I was at the restaurant, and I said I was meeting a friend there. He grumbled and told me that I should probably go meet my friend and not keep them waiting. Then I told him I had one last question before I left him that left him speechless. 
I asked him if he was small town guy one two three, which was his username on the dating site. His eyes bulged, and he muttered that he didn't know what I was talking about. I sent him one last message on the dating site messenger that read, "Caught you," and I got up and walked away. It turns out that my dad was the guy that I had been chatting with on the dating site. No wonder he had some similar interests to me. I wonder how many other online dates my dad has gone on, and if mom knows that he's cheating on her with younger women. I know I'm guilty of making my profile photo not look like me because of Photoshop, but it was still me. He just took his profile photos off of the internet that I'm positive wasn't him, even in his younger years. Even if he did find out that I was about to go on a date, I don't think I would get in trouble because I have too much blackmailing material to work with. Putting aside all of my selfish ambitions, I don't know how to handle this situation. Should I tell my mom and ruin their marriage, or just hold the blackmailing leverage over his head? Let me know in the comments your thoughts on what I should do. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Looking forward to reading your advice really soon.